All right, let me hear you. Are we going to have these balls and stuff here? Oh, like I that? mean, yeah, actually, um, like, what is it? Every house we go into has the balls. It's just- What like, is it with women and balls? <laughs> and I'm not saying that as like a 14-year-old. No, because I hate it's balls. It's like the- But the, these are fine. The bowl of balls, literally It's like decorative, and it like adds texture it to the It doesn't matter where you are in the country- it's true. It it's a decorative staple kind of in a lot of places. Um, it just adds texture to texture to the table. Okay. Do you want it or not? Yeah, leave okay. it. Well, you're complaining about it though. I just want. To, I'm just curious, like what the big allure is. Like they're just know? like different. They're different colors. They look interesting. Like if, if you go into every man cave, it's not all the same shit. It's oh, not yeah, it all. Is. It's not all New York Giants. It is all ugly leather couches stupid black desks it's all the same i can t show it's me not the same show me a la ugly black leather couch and i'll show you a man cave check the mic and make sure it sound right boys hey listeners ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50 well we did just that when our last kid went off to college we hit the road in search of a new hometown now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride this is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. What's up, All-Stars? Welcome back for another exciting episode of Skip Town. We got a special one for you today. We had a little weekend getaway. Feeling mm -hmm. good? I am. I'm feeling really good. Um, it's funny because we do travel a lot, so it's kind of weird to say that we had a weekend getaway. Yeah. But in our travels, we're looking at homes. We're um, seeing if it's an area that, you know, would fit our family. So we're doing a lot of recon right. and it doesn't always feel like um, a vacation. No. Like even all. though we're seeing sites and we're taking in uh, the area, mm -hmm. it, we're not like just chilling. <laughs> no, normally not actually. Not at all. And like we're always thinking about the show and what to include and all of that and whatever city we're in. We're like, okay, we want to talk about this. So this weekend was kind of like, let's just get away and... Um, do something fun mm -hmm. for the two of us. And um, I thought it was really nice. And the best thing of all is we actually got to go to a place you and I have, like, it's been burning a hole in our calendar I know. ever since we arrived in Florida. It's like, we wanted to go to, you know, that part of Florida, the one that everybody thinks that they're getting when they come here, yeah. which is Key West. It's so great. We finally made it there. I thought we would have been there, honestly, by December of last year. So yeah, we talked about the Florida Keys quite a bit, like kept yeah. saying that we're going to do a weekend away. Like originally, I don't know if you remember, but when we first like landed in Florida, yep. we said we're going to go to the Keys and then a hurricane hit three days later. So we decided to do it. And our friends, yeah. Carly and Mike from Los Angeles joined us because whoop, whoop. yeah, it, when you live in California, making a flight to the Florida Keys is quite a task. So um, generally people that live in California will do Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, and people that live on the East Coast do the Keys or the Bahamas. Or the Caribbean, yeah. So for them to come out and join us for our weekend was so much fun. Uh, yeah, so I'm really glad you and Carly put the trip together. We actually needed it. it I know it doesn't sound like it. we're doing a travel podcast. We're going to all these places and it's like, oh, boo-hoo. But I do find that like we tend to fill our days. Like, it's so weird because you would think life would be getting calmer for lack of a better word. And we just, I mean, between no, you, between your not. aspirations and mine, we just pack shit in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the days are full. I think that is common with every couple, especially if you have kids. And, um, I think that we both did think that our lives would be a little less hectic, a little less crazed and packed yeah. when we left Los Angeles. But the truth is we're still parents. Mm -hmm. We're still a married couple. We still have bills. We still have obligations. And this podcast is one of them. And, and finding sure. a home is another. And I think we just traded some busy tasks and yeah. busy obligations for other busy obligations. So we're kind of right where we were. And I think that can create problems with a lot of couples. And, um, you know, like people always ask because James and I have been married now for, you know, almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so people will ask all the time, well, one, how do you not get, not get sick of each other on the road, which we've talked about in the past, but two, like, how do you make it work? And I do have to say, we definitely put emphasis on spending time with each other. I think I put more emphasis on it than he does because he's 
legitimately a workaholic. And so I'm the one that will say, Hey, let's go to a movie. Hey, let's do this. But there have been times where I have been so busy myself where he'll come to me and say, um, we should like do a dinner out just you and I. And I'm like, Whoa, who's this guy? (laughs) Completely, (laughs) completely. But I did a little research and, um, you know, date night topics are really, really popular Hmm. because People want to keep things fresh. Um, did you know that 73% of couples, and I saw this when I was looking, you know, because once you go down a rabbit hole, sure. uh, Google will send you a bunch of stuff, but that 70% of marriages don't work because people just give up. Did you know that? Just because they give up? Like it's not like it's, infidelity like or hard. anything yeah. like that? Yeah. I actually pulled- I did not know that. Okay, I, actually, I would have never guessed that. I actually pulled stats. You pulled stats. Yeah. Okay. So right. here's 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 what the reason for divorce, and I found this while you know looking up uh, fun stuff to do for date nights, uh, was uh, the reason for divorce in America as of 2022, 73 percent of people lack the commitment to stay in the relationship. Wow. Do you know what the percentage is of infidelity? How much? If you had to guess. I mean, it's like I don't know. It's like. Uh, divorce is one out of every two, roughly. So I'd say 50%. Yeah, it was 55. So that's accurate. Um, people divorce because they argued too much. That was 56%. But I kind of sort of feel that goes into, um, also lack of commitment. Like if you're arguing all the time, you're not trying to work it out. And so then you just give up. Um, maybe there was 46%. Okay. This is a large number. 46% of people that divorced in 2022, got divorced because they married too young. Oh, wow. I think that's crazy. That is crazy. Because like, I don't know. I I think, well, I don't know. Like our kids are young. They're, you know, very young, 23, 20, and 19. Right. Um, They, I can't imagine them getting married in their 20s. Like too young. Like that's crazy. I think. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, there are people that get married approaching 30 now and then they realize like three years later, like, oh, this is a big mistake. I still wasn't ready. There are plenty of people I know that got married around the 30 to 35 age bracket who are no no longer with their first spouse. So. Oh, that's true. But would they say, oh, I guess they would say they got married too young. Okay. They weren't ready. Same thing, right? It was like, I was too young. I felt like I still had other people to date, whatever, whatever. Like I wasn't ready to okay, so uh, is it gonna do turn- the work of being married, all that stuff. Okay. You know? So is it going to turn into when our kids get married? Like then like when you're, then when you're, so you're getting married. Cause our kids, I guess their, their generation probably going to get married later in life. So then what at 50, you get divorced because you say you were too young at 40. Uh, maybe. I mean, look at life expectancy. They're all talking about raising like retirement age because people are living longer and all that. So, you know. Wow. Okay. So for me, too young just kind of like threw me for a loop when I saw that stat. I do think commitment's an issue. And I think it's, I don't know. I think it's an issue because people think it's so easy to find a new mate. Yeah. There's but some of that. I don't that. know if it is that easy to find a new mate. I, I really don't. I mean, I, we look, we both have friends who are single, who are divorced. Um, I don't know. Like if I asked them, I don't think anyone would want to go back to their original partner, but I think every, everyone would agree it's not as easy as they maybe thought it was going to be. I don't know. You just like, well, when you look, when you're divorced, like you're going to meet somebody who might have kids and you may not have oh yeah, kids. It's, it's like, definitely not as, set up. Yeah, it's not as easy as like, I've had plenty of guy friends who thought it was going to be like, and maybe it was for the first six months. It was like, Oh, I'm dating. I'm on a spree. And then all of a sudden it's like enough lonely nights rack up together. And they're like, man, this is not as easy as good as I thought it was going to be. Or, yeah. There are plenty of people that male and female that are like, this is awesome. I love being single. So, yeah. you know, yeah. But um, not that they would ever go back to their original partner. I'm not saying right, that. Right. Just, I just think that for some people, um, it's not the cakewalk they thought it was going to be in terms yeah. of finding somebody new. But, but when they were in the marriage, they thought it would be so easy to find sure. somebody new. It's kind of like when you have a boyfriend, it's easy to get another boyfriend. Than when you're when single. you have a job, it's easier to get another job. Yeah, yeah. That, that I think that's what it is. That I think tracks. that's so. Like when you're married, you attract other people because you're married. But damn, the minute you're divorced, it's like the desert. You can't find anyone. Yeah. I also think that you know, uh, thinking about social media, your iPhone, binge watching, all that stuff. It's like everything is at your fingertips now, and you get a little dopamine hit off of all that stuff. And the work of staying in a relationship when with somebody when it's hard. 
that's not a dopamine hit. Like that's a, that can be a grind, you know, yeah. like even for the best of us, you and I have both had periods where it's like just lacking communication, feeling at odds with your partner is a grind. Not that either one of you are good or bad. It's just for whatever reason, you're not sinking together at that moment. That sucks. You know, mm -hmm. it's true. So I remember when we were having a backyard party or something and Mimi had asked me what, like, what is it that makes you guys work? And I remember just saying to her what I basically just said now, which is that we were never on the same page of wanting to be out of the relationship. Like there were always moments where like he may have been frustrated with me and was like, I'm out. And there were moments where I was frustrated with him and I was like, I'm out. But neither one of us were ever on that same page. And I think had that- You mean both of us together were never on the same oh, page. Oh, what did I say? Neither one of us. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, both of us together were never on the same page. So, <laughs> so when he was ready to like- you know, like, I'm sick of you. I'd like, no, no, I'm still good. I'll be nice tomorrow. And like where I was like, oh no, I'm done with this. He's like, wait, wait. I, I, I think, you know, tomorrow will be a better day. If we had both been on the same page at that time, yeah, I don't think we'd be together because there has to be somebody that's the reasonable one. It would be called Skip Town All-Star. Who would be it? <laughs> it would have been you. Are you kidding? You think so? I can't set Mostly. up this stuff. Huh? I can't, I'd have to hire oh, you no, to set yeah. up this stuff. Yeah, you would have had to hire people for sure. I'd hire you. But I wouldn't pay you alimony if you were making me set up all your gear just to get your little enterprise but off the But think about it. I'd make, I'd make one day. You'd make money for our children. Oh, okay. It wouldn't be for me, right? I would give you a little. You'd, I'd break you'd some You'd break off. me off some? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. But, you know, uh, I think it's really important to say like, you know, like, Anybody who's been in a relationship for any length of time knows that it's not easy. Like, like there's no way you could come to our house or anywhere oh. we are the night before a trip and think these two people are going to stay together for a long time. <laughs> There's no way. It's like like we need to do a show like Skip Town After Dark. And yeah. let me tell you, it is not sexy. Uh -uh. So it is uh -uh. not the after dark you think of. It's no. like, how are these two people in six hours going to get in the same car together? So that's why even for us traveling, uh, we even need a weekend away. But you know what? Going back to what you just said, that traveling sometimes can be challenging. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Because we've been on the road now for, you know, it's been nine months. Right? We could have had a baby in this time. <laughs> we could have given Why the girls a little brother. <laughs> okay. They would mute me. Oh, they would. They'd they would really literally. Angry. Oh, Ellie has They would not said, be willing to share. Right no. now, they've settled into having a third of inheritance. They would not want to go down no. to a quarter. And they would not babysit. Oh, they would not. They would completely protest. Like, Ellie no. has already said, I'm the baby and I'm not sharing that title with anyone. No. I'm just saying nine months. We birthed the podcast. That's about it. <laughs> but we've been on the road for nine months. So one of the things that I find challenging when I'm with James on the road, he's, I don't want to say a bad driver because I've been on the road with you for nine months. So, and you know, it's like, that's such a, that's such a big, big, that's like a big umbrella, but he has this knack of every single time I doze off, he has to hit the brakes. <laughs> Sometimes traffic stops. No, what am I so supposed to do? Here's the thing. I realized this. I realized this probably about six months into dating him that um, whoever taught him how to drive was terrible and he needs to be retaught. But he's so old Nobody now. Nobody taught me. I grew up in Ohio. We just, you just drive. Oh, that explains it. And, and, but at this point, you can't teach him anything new because it's virtually impossible. So he has this knack that he doesn't realize. And I've said to him over and over again, and sometimes he gets really mad when I remind him and I could tell because like the okay. little vein on the side of his head will start to pop out when I say okay. this and he'll say, I, I, you know, um, you've said this before, but if you just take your foot off the gas, the car slows down Usually. immediately. No, immediately. No, unless you're doing 85, it doesn't just slow down. Trust me. I've tested this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not with me in the car. Yeah. Not, no, because every time I'm in the car, it, it you will take slow your down. Foot, but if the car up in front of you is doing 60 and you're doing 85, trust me, it doesn't slow down in time. Okay. Here's what I know. Every single time I am asleep, you have to slam on your brakes. Every, every time? time. Oh, oh. Every time. I got well, in the car the other day. You should be spending time with me. Why are you trying to sleep in the car? 
I got in the car the other day and I said, please. (laughs) (laughs) What'd you say? I said, please. I want to look at my phone and not get car sick. (laughs) I said, can you not slam on the brakes every single time traffic starts to slow? Like he doesn't even gauge it. It's like, it's the worst. I really want you to like learn how to do things differently when it comes to approaching traffic. Okay. I just, I don't know. I'm kind of like more of the NASCAR train of thought. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, where it's like on the brake, off the brake, switch gears. Yeah, I'm, I'm not particularly- is comfortable? I'm not I particularly, ra- I'm not interested in racing anyone. I'm just particularly interested in not having to slow down for anyone. Okay, I know your neck does the jerky thing every time you I know, stop. but I'm driving so I can feel it coming. <laughs> You're like mouth agape catching flies with your head out. Okay. So you don't slobbering mind on getting yourself. whiplash because you do it. I mean, on a six hour you know what? drive. When I do it. I put my arm out to like stop you from but going doesn't forward. doesn't your neck hurt? No. I don't know. It feels good. Like I like the Whip, way I drive. Whipping it? Whipping it back and forth when you are jerky? Like everyone who drives with my you in the back seat. T- like I'm tensing my neck because I see Everybody that I in the back seat gets sick. Every, it's it's historical. Anyone it's who sits in the back seat gets sick. I don't think so. Okay. Let's get into what annoys me. Oh, I'm, it's going to be tough. This is my favorite one. I will be listening to a radio show <laughs> or a podcast or music and just rocking out, living my best life. <laughs> and you will turn it off so that you can talk to Siri in your phone and instead uh-huh. of typing a text, uh-huh. you just want to talk to the phone so that you can leave your epic Moses long uh-huh. texts for people. Yeah, he'll be in the middle of literally singing to like White Snake, and I will just boom. You are literally the reason TLDR, the acronym, exists. Too long didn't read. Like, oh, that's a thing. That's a thing. Oh, like when right. the kids say, I'm sorry, mom, I didn't have time to read all that. What they're really saying to you is TLDR, the, the Reddit version of TLDR. <laughs> yeah. Too long, didn't read. Oh, too long, didn't yeah. read. Okay. The other thing is you really hate my jug. You hate my jug. <laughs> like my, my, my hydro it jug. It takes up so much space. I need water. Okay. I fill up my hydro and I like I brought it out just the other day. You were like, we're not going to have room for your jug. I was like, you're kidding me? I did. It's like, yeah, you I saw, told him it's he had to size keep it home. A, it's a size of a one liter bottle. I told him he had to keep me? it home. I said, there's yeah, no room, she's for, like, the there's no room for the car for that. <laughs> so traveling with your partner is tough. The whole theme of the show. Is that the theme of the show? No, is we can get away. Oh, we're just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, whatever. It's a it theme of this segment. It went down a rabbit hole. It was we can get away. <laughs> like, I guess we I know, really like, needed how it. How to be romantic. <laughs> how to be romantic. When your husband carries out his jug, Ugh. yell at him and say, why are you bringing that? Yeah. It's not going to fit in the car it's with like, everybody in the we're car. We're not I'm like, apocalyptic. It's, a, like, it's a water bottle. Just can you get a regular one? Like, why does it have to be 50 ounces? I don't understand I'm it. I'm thirsty. <laughs> what did you think this week? I don't know. I thought we were going to talk about a romantic was? weekend getaway in What did you think this West? episode was? I don't know. Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. It's funny you talk about the statistic of people giving up. It's just like, I don't know. It's weird. It's like a trend right now. If something's like painful or uncomfortable or, or makes you feel awkward, people just like pull the ripcord and they're out. But then you also, don't you think sometimes you run the line too of like, being boring with that person like you guys do the same thing all the time like you yeah. see like it's always like too, it's to me it's like, like it becomes two mundane. extremes yeah it's like you yeah. have the person who's like it's not exciting enough or right. you know like um it's not working so boom i'm out and then you yeah. have the other couple that do the same stuff every yeah. single all day. teddy wants to do is fish every weekend right you know so you know um those people really need like a date night, don't you think? I hate the word date night. I've always hated that word. I've always, when I had kids, everyone was like, gotta go on a date night. Cause there's something, is there another way we can, I hate that well, word. I, I hate mean, that when phrase. the kids were young, I think, I hate uh, that phrase. I, when the kids were young, I think the way you phrased it was, um, I need to get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Let's yeah. do, I need to get the fuck out of here weekend. Yeah, that's what we did. Okay. And then once in a while we would. Yeah. But um, speaking about getting comfortable, Oh my gosh. Do you remember the time that my cousin was dating a girl and she only like on the third time they went out, she decided to invite him over 
like they were going to like, she was going to make dinner at her house or apartment or something like that. <clears throat> it was like the third time he was going out with her uh-huh. and um, <laughs> she put sweatpants on. Oh yeah. Okay. And he broke I was up trying to her. think of which cousin you were yeah, talking about. And he about. broke up with her. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, he's like, she's a little too comfortable this soon. This soon. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the sweatpants, like when I see, when anyone says anything about sweatpants, <laughs> awesome. it has put the fear of God into all three of my girls, everybody. My sister-in-law talks about the yeah. sweatpants story. Everyone talks about this story the about- The best part of the story is- This poor girl had no he's, idea. He's a good enough looking guy where he could totally get away with it. Like he was just like, yeah, you right. know what? You're absolutely I don't right. need a girl that wears sweatpants. I've got plenty of other girls interested in uh, me. Yeah. The third time they got together, she put sweatpants on. He's like, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I tried, I wonder, did he ever tell her? No. And we were all like, we felt bad for her. Like because, you should tell her not to wear sweatpants around guys. Yeah, because she's she probably just, wondering what the hell happened. She was wondering what the hell happened. Yeah. yeah. I even had to call his mom and I was like, seriously, he's not going to tell her. And she's like, no. And I was like, oh, poor girl. Because if somebody just tells you, hey, you like put sweatpants on a little too soon. You're a little too comfortable right out of the gate. No makeup. <laughs> she would never do that again. Yeah. <clears throat> so I really. That's pretty. That's That's tough. I mean, that's like. I've never. That's, that's a standard right there that he went for, like right away. He could. I mean, it no, wasn't even like. It's true though. Clearly, he didn't like her enough to stick around. So, but would to you overlook it. Okay, if she's wearing sweatpants on the he third could have date, said to her. Yeah, well, I know, I know, but he could have said to her later. I don't know, whatever. I don't. Know, this is not relationship therapy, so whatever. No, but it is. But I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's um, like so. I mean, the thing is, is that when you get so comfortable on a third date, what's it going to be like in three years? That's a like good you're point. not going to like get out of bed. I totally get where he's coming from with that, and yeah. especially at the age he was at at the time yeah. it happened. It was like he doesn't want sweatpants girl. No. He wants exciting, trendy, cute, yeah. dressed well girl. Like, I totally let's have fun it. every weekend, girl. Yeah, let's yeah. get the fuck out of here, weekend girl. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, all right, well, it didn't work out for her, but no. I hope she's doing well. So, with so whatever you know, guy she met, I'm sure she met a guy that's perfectly happy with her being in sweatpants. All oh, the time. I'm sure she did. Of course. Like, yeah. there's someone for everyone. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, but you do run the gamut of, like, like you said, you know, um, it being, uh, I'm out of here so quickly, like, you know, the yeah. whole dopamine thing about like getting an instant gratification. And then you also run the gamut of people who like, you know, what is it, Ted? Ted's fishing all the time? Teddy. Teddy's Teddy. always fishing. Teddy's always fishing and they don't never do anything. Or, or metaphorical <clears throat> Teddy in this, yeah. Not that there's, I like fishing. Fishing's cool. But, you know, you can't, like once in a while, you got to take your girl to the farmer's market, Teddy. Agreed. I mean, but I yeah. also think that like when you do a date night, oh. I hate that. Okay, get the F out of here weekend night. Yeah. Um, somebody has to be in charge of it. There's now like crazy apps where like they make you pick, like the app will pick who's going to plan the weekend. So I found this app. It's called Schwazi. I hope I'm saying it right. It's C-H-W-A-Z-I. And if you look it up, it's hysterical. It's basically an app. C-H? Yeah, Chwazi. Chwazi. C H W A Z I. All right, you said it really fast, and it's like not a bunch of letters that go together. So I'm yeah. glad you repeated it yeah. for the listeners. So it's it's this really fun app where like if both of you cannot decide who wants to plan the weekend, because you know it is a lot of work. You put your fingers on the screen of your phone. Like he puts his finger, you put your finger on the screen, and then it will have these little circles that'll like run around the screen. It's kind of like musical chairs, and it'll stop on a finger. And that's the person that plans the weekend. But in this case, I just, I took it over. So we did not have to do that. What I did do though, that I thought would be fun was I saw this game on TikTok called date night card game. What it is, is you fill out index cards of like five things that you want to do, or maybe your partner would really enjoy doing that you haven't done. And then you give your partner the opportunity to pick one of those index cards without showing them what's on the other side. So you prevent, you present five blank cards to them and say, okay, you know, pick one and we're going to do that tonight, but you do it during the course of your weekend. So you can start it off with like, just even at breakfast, like, you know, make five index cards of like five fun places to go for breakfast. And you can throw in a doozy like McDonald's. So I decided to do this on our trip But I didn't do it with five index cards. I just, I did it with two. There were both things that, you know, I I knew he would like. So you got to pick, was there any piece of paper that you picked that you were like, oh, I don't want to do this? I was pleasantly surprised that you wanted to do something that I actually really enjoy. Like they were all great. It was like laying on the beach. But the thing, the point of the game is that, the point of the game is that I pick things that you would like to do. 
not necessarily that I would like to do, but that oh. I think you would like to do. I know, but you still have to be willing to do them with me. I What's did. the point? Yeah, it's That's true. A, it'd be a shitty oh, date right. night so I didn't pick, if I'm like, picking out stuff that you don't uh, like. Well, I did have some say in, in, in what in what was on the piece of paper. And like, I didn't put parasailing, you know? So um, I did <laughs> put- not willing, That's off the table, Oh, huh? that is totally off the table. Okay. The only thing I did a little differently is um, both pieces of paper had the same thing. Wait, what? Yeah, both pieces of paper had the same thing. So whichever you one you chose. I was picking one of the two, they uh -huh. both said the same thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is a false choice. Why would you do that to me? Because I really wanted to have shrimp tacos. I really wanted to go on that boat. <laughs> My God. I really wanted wow. uh -huh. You didn't know that. No, I, no, I did not know that. I never saw the other thing. I mean, I did wonder at times, but I just thought it was like- uh -huh. You had a little, like you, I saw you little, had a little stack and I didn't want, like, I'm not the kind of guy that like looks in the closet at Christmas or whatever uh -huh. and, and tries to see what my presents are. I did not look through your stack of paper to see what else was in store for the weekend. Oh, that's so, some bullshit. You hold on me right there. I'm not happy about that at all. So, so if there's something you really want to do, make sure all the cards have that the same stuff that you activity. want to do on them. <laughs> Because they could easily, because you could easily fill out a card with something yeah. like you totally know they want to do. Like I could put things on there like watch football all day. Oh, hell no. I'm not putting that card in there. <laughs> I am not putting that card in there. So yeah, but look, you had a good time. So what does it matter? It doesn't matter, but I'm surprised you actually, yeah, that's uh -huh. funny. Yeah. Oh, look at you. You're sneaky. That. I am. Uh-huh. This just makes me think, what else is she sneaking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't lie. So it's yeah. hard for me to be sneaky. So, I mean, even now. <laughs> no, I'm you are you. brutally honest, oh, actually. I'm sorry. You're at the other end of the spectrum. Oh, oh I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> a lot of people hate that. I know. They really do. They yeah. really do. My therapist many years ago told me, Denise, not everyone wants to hear the truth. It's true. It's absolutely I've, true. Like, I've cut back a lot. Like, if you know what goes on in my head most of the time that is yeah. unsaid, it's spectacular. Oh, I, I well, I've known you long enough. Oh, that reminds me of a story. Oh, no. oh, that, oh wait, story time, people. Oh, my God, you're going to love this. Okay, so uh. we are on this boat, right? And we did the sea kayaking. And as we're doing the sea kayaking, okay, there was one particular- talk, no, no. talk about the boat. It's we're, it's not like a private boat that we rented. We're on a boat with. Okay, I'll set the, I'll set the table. You're gonna have to. We're on a we're on a private boat. I'm just kidding. We're not on a private <laughs> boat. We're on a very public tour boat. Um, and oh. on this boat, there are about probably forty other people, maybe. Total. Exactly, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, you don't have to do the sea kayaking. But for those who want to engage, they can. So we're standing there, and they like hand us the life vests and all this stuff. And as we're standing there, we see this young couple. With a baby. A baby baby. A baby baby. Like, like a little baby. Like, like and the little six baby, months old. And the little baby has a paddle board attached to it, like a floaty paddle board as part of its bathing suit, right? Like it was all one contraption. And the was baby it was in a paddle board. It was I a don't white baby too. It was like a white ass baby. I was like, why is that little white ass baby in the sun? Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, it made no sense. Whatever. Anyway, these people were like, oh, we're taking the little baby out on the sea kayak with us. Now, where we were sea kayaking, it wasn't like Sandy Beach. It was like through mangroves, which are basically islands made of twisted trees coming out out of the water. There's no place for land or anything like that. And below us is like this spiky seaweed. So if you tip your sea kayak, then they're going to be standing in spiky seaweed trying to get their baby back. Right. And so anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter because even if they came back from the mangroves, the water's like 30 feet deep where the boat was. Yeah. It was deep. So anyway, it was the just ocean. like- ocean. We're in the ocean. We're in the sea. It was like one of those things where you're like, do you we're really need- We're in the need sea. We get it, hon. We're in the sea. We're, Who like, would take we're a outside baby? the keys. Who would water. take a baby okay. in a kayak? I need to finish the story. Go ahead. It's insane. Well, that's not the most insane part. <laughs> and so, and well, so, we had a problem the minute we saw the baby okay, on the you're boat. Tell the story. No, you know I had a problem the minute I saw that baby on the boat. Not okay. even in the kayak. When Denise and I were first married, we went on a trip to Hawaii and we hiked the Nepali coast. Nepali coast, right on on Kauai, and she was so alarmed. We were up in the mountains. So if you if you ever do those mountains, we're off on a tangent. If you ever if you ever do those mountains, it's like cliffside hiking, and no rail and mud. 
like especially if it rains. And there was just a guy in bare feet with a little baby on his shoulders, like walking through. And Denise, holding. I learned right away, holding. like Denise does not approve of Like if she sees, like even the city park, like if there's a guy towing a baby on his bike in one of those little baby taxis, <laughs> but she freaks out. She's like, that's the stupidest thing ever. Why would he ever put that baby in there? Yeah, because someone's going to hit him from behind, not paying attention. Well, the he's baby's on the dead. Side. He's on the bike trail. People are on their phone. In the park. So I know she has this thing with babies, right? She doesn't like babies to be outside. Sorry, I do like people to take care of she their babies. She does not but- like babies to be outside, okay? <laughs> so these people do this trip and uh, they come back on their sea kayak and they're getting off the boat. And it wasn't easy. It was like a little like uh, metal staircase that folds out at the bottom of the boat. So you actually slide your kayak up under the boat and then you have to grab the ropes of the ladder and pull yourself up without falling in, right? Uh-huh. And um, uh, dude, dad, uh, he decides he's going to come off first or whatever. And so he gets off and he's fine. And then uh, mom hands the baby to the dude. And, and as dad is climbing the stairs, all I hear, like I was only half paying attention. All I hear was, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. And it's like, Denise, like, oh my God. Like, I was like, I looked and it was like terror in her eyes. I'm like, oh my God, it was like Pet cemetery or something. And so I look he over fell. and she, and the dude actually did fall up the stairs with the baby uh-huh. in his hands. And someone else had to catch the baby. To his credit, he took it on the shoulder and the baby never hit the stairs, but it was a, it did prove your theory that it was a dumb idea all along to take that baby on that Somebody thing. grabbed that baby from yeah. his hands because he was he falling. He was still two, two stairs the from the top. Up yeah, while he was, he was falling and yeah. somebody grabbed the baby. Yeah, because turns out the stairs are really wet at the bottom of a boat coming off of a sea kayak. So he metal. slipped and he started falling. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I knew that given Denise's history of hating babies being outside, that we were going to have Unsafe. a problem. And she was just staring and glaring at this guy as he sort of picked his bloodied self up <laughs> off of the stairs. He had a scrape on his arm, whatever. He stands up and then whoever took the baby is like waiting for him to get up the stairs and they give him back the baby. And I just walk over to Denise because I could see her and I know all she wanted to do was say, yeah, you shouldn't have had the baby on the boat, right? You idiot. You idiot. So- Anyway, I'm standing there talking to her. I'm like, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> and I just, be, I had to become her inner voice at that moment. I go, we're going to understand that there are stupid people everywhere and we can't stop stupid everywhere we go. We're just going to let this one go. It was a dumb idea. I think he realizes now that he's fallen, it's a dumb idea. We're just going to stand here. We're not going to say anything. We're not going to say anything. We're not going to say anything. And I kept saying it over and over and over. And a whole time I knew she was on the edge of like really letting this guy have it. Like, you dumbass, why did you bring that baby on this boat? That baby's white. It shouldn't even be in the sun. And now you took it out in the kayak and then you stupid ass fell up the stairs. Here's the thing. They put the baby's life in danger. And I'll tell you why. Because they could be professional kayakers. But the problem is not everyone that was on this tour was a professional kayaker. So when you're on the kayaks, people are hitting you with their kayaks because guess what? Some of these people have never been on a kayak before. So it didn't matter if they were professional kayakers. People were running into them because people were- They were decidedly were, not professional kayakers. Yeah. They I, is were, that I even a job? Even, yeah. There are people who like- are sea kayakers or who like, yeah, for sure. And it's not a job, but it's a hobby and it can be a a perfect, like not a profession, but it can be a hobby that turns into- They're an expert sea kayaker. Yeah, it's just like it's a whitewater rafting Put that on your business card. I mean, yeah, you could be a professional. You take people on tours, sure. You can be a professional. They weren't that. And it's like, who takes a six month old in a kayak in the ocean? Like who does that? I mean, who does that? Like, here's what's even crazier. They had a grandma and grandpa with them. And guess what? They were in the kayak right next to them. So they condoned this behavior, yeah. which to me was just child abuse. It was chi- child <laughs> negligence, complete child negligence. It took everything from oh, me they not weren't to say- negligent, hun. The baby was with them. They, they were attending to the baby. Nope. They were negligent by bringing the baby on a kayak. That mm-hmm. is that is bad parenting. Anyway, it bad was some parenting. Ba- it was some bad judgment. For yeah. Me. So it ruined like- part of the, the trip for me because I couldn't get my mind off this baby and like how terrible <laughs> We're standing care. on this beautiful sandbar 
And all Denise can think about is this baby. And yeah. finally I'm like, babe, just grab a mimosa. Like the baby's fine. We're not doing any more kayaking today. I just can't believe, like, but, but it did, it did make me feel better when someone else in the group was like, wow, they're idiots. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm not the only one here. I mean, my friend thought well, they were idiots. We all thought they were idiots. Yeah, I think the majority of the boat thought they were idiots. Yeah. Other than that one mm-hmm. lady who passed out who would disagree with you. I don't think she remembers the baby at all. Yeah, <laughs> she had a little too much champagne. Yeah. You were nervous too I before won. the sea kayaking. You were nervous because you told me. Oh, that like, one I was. You're yeah. not going to tip this over, right? I didn't want to be that couple. And and I Babe, knew we had- on, I got this. We had the chances of being that couple. So- um, At but least he, we didn't have a baby with us. No. But then but then you, he handled it really well because everybody, like you know how like when you're skiing and you cross your skis, well, that's what everyone was doing with their kayaks. Pizza, they were crossing. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what it's called when you do when you tell little kids to cross their skis. You're like pizza, pizza, pizza. <laughs> and you try is? to get them to stop as they're barreling down the bunny <laughs> slope. Yeah. Okay, so everyone was crossing their kayaks, and so we had to stay yeah. way back. Yeah, there so- were a group of like three kayaks in front of us, and I was like. So I actually, I actually, I actually hit you with my oar at one point yeah, on the did. back of your life he vest, did. and I he was like, me. "Stop paddling! Uh-huh. Yeah. We are not rowing into that. Like we are not going into that mess yeah. in front of us." There were the same three boats fighting for position or running into each other the entire way around yeah. the mangroves. There was the three people, the same three boats. Yes, yeah. it's true. And yeah. I was like, uh-huh. "No, I'm like we are we are staying back here away from it. even the German kids behind oh, us." Oh, they were way far. Yeah, they were like they were like no nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> they were they were they were like no they sat and those guys were muscular dudes they could have out paddled everybody yeah it's true and they were like no we're it's just going to enjoy our day and not get tangled up in these yeah. six people that are going to like all be in the water in a moment yeah so, so um so what we ended up doing was uh, the first night that we got to the florida keys and we're going to talk about like a little bit about the Florida Keys and um, like, you know, some of its history. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause we did, you know, we, I did do a little research before I, I, I got there. I did just, not. It's okay. Uh, I just showed up. He did. Typical. Uh, so uh, the first, here's how, here's how the weekend pretty much went. On any single trip we take, whether it's a family vacation or even just like, you know, him and I doing a weekend away, the first night is always like the chill night. Like let's just hang Sometimes we go out to dinner. Sometimes we'll order in like room service. It just depends. Or stay on, I stay at the hotel and order dinner. Like we, yeah, we normally just get food and walk around. Yeah. Or- and just, so that's what we did here. So we landed in the Keys on a Saturday and we just really took in the place that where we stayed. Um, here's something interesting about the Keys, this particular island. So the Keys are actually made up of 800 islands. Yeah. Which is crazy because I think we drove through maybe seven of them, but I'm thinking like we're the other seven hundred and ninety three. We ta- we passed tons well, of them. You could see they're, them. In they're the little horizon. ones, yes. You know? But uh, the main ones were like what you hear of the keys. So there's like Isla Morada, and then there's like, Isla Morada. Mm, oh, okay, Isla Morada. Here we go again. Oh, You're God. back on that name thing. <laughs> then there's Marathon, and then um, you have obviously uh, Key Largo. Then you have Key West. So <clears throat> not necessarily in that order. No, not at all. But the, that's yeah. like th- those are the islands. Those you, are the big ones. The big ones. Yeah, exactly. So um, so interesting. I got yelled at by a lady, so I had to look this up. But um, there are no um, corporate hotels on Isla Morada. That is the first island we stayed on when we got to the Keys. And that um, that island has no corporate hotels. Oh, so no like Marriott or anything there? Nope. There's no oh, really? Hampton Inn. There's no Holiday oh, Inn. Yeah, I didn't you, realize that. Yeah. So every, every hotel, every resort, wherever you're staying is privately owned. Hey, it may be like a corporation of its own, but sure. it's not owned by a corporate yeah, entity. It's, own, it's like a I mean? local chain or whatever. Exactly. And then uh, we had hmm. a hard time finding um, a a liquor store uh, liquor. inside of a grocery store. Because in Florida, the way it works is that the liquor stores are usually inside of grocery stores and they're in separate, it's a separate entrance. So um, we went to the main grocery store, which is Publix. It's a, it, that is a corporate owned grocery store. And they did have that on Isla Morada. But there was no liquor store uh, in that grocery store. So we had to find an independent liquor store. And, uh, when we did, I asked the owner about it. I said, why does this Publix not have a liquor store? Because it's just odd. It's like, I've never come across a grocery store where there was not a liquor store attached to it in Florida at this point. Uh, and we've been all over Florida. 
And she got very sassy with me. She immediately said, no, this is what she first said. She went, oh. She was missing like four teeth. So I got a view of that. Front teeth or back? Oh, front and back. It was front and side. So she was missing like one on the front, two on the side, one on the bottom. When she did her ha, huh, I got a, I got a, I got a good look at those. And then she told me how she had lived there for 40 years. And if there were um, liquor stores inside of Publix or any grocery store on the island, she would be out of business. And, you know, oh. and so then I said to her, okay. You've been here for 40 years. I've been here for four minutes. I'm literally just asking you a right. question. But we were on other islands and they did have corporate stores oh, and yeah. corporate hotels. Key West, Key is West all has it. Yeah, they're all about Marathon it. had a Publix, if I remember right, with well, a liquor store. Oh, yeah, you're right. We drove past yep, it. Yep, it is true. Power but, to the small businesses. I like that idea. It's not bad. It is. But I mean, she could have presented it a, a, the concept a little nicer to you. Yeah, I don't think that was in her wheelhouse. She's not in her wheelhouse. No. Um, the only downside to that is that um, you don't have a lot of inexpensive choices when it comes to food that I found. So yeah. with all restaurants being you know privately owned, um, they're charging high prices on that particular island. Yeah. So for us, I found it to be very expensive to eat, and we did not go to fancy places no. whatsoever. So um, yeah, they were just like kind of your salty dog restaurants with like a, a full bar, obviously, but like a group or dinner would be like thirty nine dollars. Yeah, like and the so. the cheapest meal would start at twenty five, which I thought was ex very very expensive. And um, people kept saying to us the whole time that we were there oh, you're here during high season. But I was like, well, these menus aren't high yeah, the season food menus. Don't change. Like these are going to be the same menus in July. Right. So, you know, when no one's here, whoever, whoever is here, because it's so damn hot, they're still going to be paying $25 for a burger, which um, I don't know. I just, I found that to be um, extremely expensive. It was expensive weekend for sure. There's no yeah. doubt. Well, so the first day we went there, we chilled. The second day we went there, we decided that we were going to rent a boat, just the four of us. And and our, our friend, Mike, he's had a boat for years. He felt very comfortable. Yeah, we didn't need a captain. Driving the boat. Between but, the two but of what us, was but odd, mostly him. He drove most of the day. I couldn't get a captain. Like I called so many places to get a captain, but with the four of us there and Mike having a boat. And although you're very comfortable on a boat, um, I did think it was odd. I, I particularly wanted to get a captain so we could all enjoy ourselves. Yeah. Um, it was back. weird that I couldn't get a captain. No place offered a captain. Um, I asked like, can I hire a captain? And the one place was like, oh yeah, you can get a captain, but it's going to be more than your boat rental. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that's insane. Like, why is that? So why is that a thing? I, I think would think in a beach town like that, it'd be more prevalent. Weren't you surprised? A little bit, but I think you could mostly, like if you're not going to charter somebody's specific boat to actually rent them as people, like to basically hire them as people to come onto some other boat. And let's face like the place oh, where you rented boats. The, the, yeah, you could have just I chartered a boat. You like charter with, a boat. With it's a like, captain yeah, already and he's attached. like, do you want to fish or do you want to just tool around? And you say, we just want to tool around. Oh, you I didn't even think about that. Boat. Oh my gosh. I was literally- yeah, You don't rent your own boat and then hire a captain. Yeah, that's you what I was- do that. That's exactly um, what I was doing. That said though, one important thing in the Keys is to know that like a lot of the Keys, like a lot of the area around the Keys or whatever, it's shallow water. Like we got stuck in the mud once mm -hmm. and we had to back out. Mm -hmm. And then um, there are other areas- Because it went from areas. 30 feet to two feet like that. Yeah. And if you can't like, you know, if you don't have your eyeglasses on and you can't read the little tiny markings on the buoys, mm -hmm. you could easily find yourself. So the sure. best advice I can give anybody who's renting a boat in the Keys is- follow traffic, like watch where the other boats are going and mm -hmm. then just follow them. Even if you have to cross their wake to get into their channel, it's worth it because, yeah. um, you know, I mean, we were fine. We had just, we had a small boat and it did really well in shallow, shallow water and everything. And it was just the four of us and we weren't like going crazy. We weren't water skiing. But we weren't doing any of that stuff. Here's so. what's insane. That two feet of water was in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about the shore. Yeah. We did not come near the that's shore. That's why there's so many islands. I it's mean, that's why there's crazy. 800 islands. It's like all of a sudden, boom, like a landmass pops up, you know? Yeah, it was crazy. And it's crazy. not always above the water if it's high tide. So Yeah, that's you know, so true. Yeah. That's so true. So, so you yeah. got to be careful. You got to watch the buoys. It's like one of those things where it's like, don't think that like once you're out away oh, from no. the dock that you're cool because you are not. The keys, yeah. the keys are not made that way. So. No, and that was the beauty of it. So we rented yeah. a boat because- um, we wanted to explore, honestly, like get out on the ocean yep. and 
I was told that the water is just beautiful. You can, you can see down to the bottom almost throughout the entire area of the Keys. And I wanted to see it for myself. There are sandbars that just would pop up out of nowhere. So you would be on, you're on a boat yeah. and it's just beautiful ocean. And you're looking down and you see all the green underneath you on the ocean bed floor. And then all of a sudden it's white sand. It just turns into white sand, it like a huge patch of it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I've, I kept saying the entire time I was sitting on the boat, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. I just, I've been to the Caribbean. I went to St. Martin many years ago, but I wasn't on a boat. I was obviously at a beach. So it's, it's totally different, but being out in the ocean, um, there was one point i don't know how many miles out we were at the um we went to a um the lighthouse lighthouse and i don't know if it was 30 miles from shore 20 no, miles from shore what far. do you think 10 miles at the most yeah okay but there was a sandbar we literally jumped out of our boat and it was about 15 feet down was a sand right carly said 15 yeah i mean yeah. that's not really by definition a sandbar oh, sandbar sorry. is when it that comes one, up and right. you can actually yes yes i'm so sorry beat your boat there on. wasn't a sandbar there but there was well, there's plenty sand. of sand in that yes. area and so the, so the, we literally anchored and just went swimming yeah. on top of the and sand it was super pretty it, it was, was great beautiful um so i i really wanted to see that and i was so glad that carly and mike the our other you know the couple that were with us were up for it because um i just felt like we're there the water is beautiful like let's do something very key west that was awesome yeah the only only thing was that the next day, Carly and Mike had planned an, another boat adventure, but this that was one, a sea kayaking day. Yeah, that was a sea kayaking day, and that was with a, a company, and that was with a group of people. I had just wished that we had a day in between of those two boat days because, um, because you don't do that much sun back to back. I can't. It's very very hard for me. I did it. Look it, at this complexion, people, for those of you watching on YouTube. It was, yeah, She's it was a hard. White lady. It was hard. I'm not going to lie. I, 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 I had a difficult time I, because I was out in the sun. I was tired um, in the water. It, it just, it was a long day. So yeah. my only, my only advice to anyone that's going to do a vacation weekend in the Keys, just do one boat day. Or if you're going to be there for three boat, three days and you're going to do two boat days, make the second day just a day on land. Like just feet in the sand or walking, you know, yeah, around. Yeah, kicking it in downtown Key West yeah, or something like that. Yeah, because it's just, it's unless you're a fisherman, it's a little bit hard doing back-to-back -back boat rides because the second one, we went to a legit sandbar, right? Yeah. That was a legit sandbar. And we did paddle boarding there, which is something I've never done. And I, I didn't. I can't say that I actually even really did it. Like I, I got up on the paddle board very quickly because I yeah, saw- you paddled what, a couple of times. Technically you did it. I saw what everyone else was doing and how they were falling off. I was like, oh no, I've got this. I got this under wraps. So getting up was actually, that's the hard part for most people. That was really easy for me. Getting it moving was hard because it was windy a little bit. I don't know, which was, is super hard. <laughs> well, okay. So you were pointed into the wind. Yeah. And into the wake. And so you were paddling, paddling, I wasn't paddling. I not going anywhere. And you weren't going anywhere because the wind was blowing directly against you. Unlike a uh, champagne lady who had <laughs> a lot, and this was like uh -huh. her breaking point, uh, she, actually, she actually moved pretty quickly. And before we knew it, the captain was yelling at her from the megaphone because she had yeah. traversed the sandbar and now was on her way out into the ocean. Yeah, she was literally in the ocean. She wasn't on sandbar yeah. anymore. And he yelled at her. And what did he say? He goes, uh, I'm just telling you, Cuba is only 90 miles away and you are headed there right now. That, that was, was an interesting fact. Cuba is only 90, 90 miles, miles away from Key West. From, yeah. From where we were, yeah, yeah uh -huh. pretty cool. Yeah, um, I would definitely recommend, like, if I don't know, we could. You're not asking me; I'm just saying it because um, my show too, uh, <laughs> sorta. <laughs> that is, uh, I would say I would rather spend more days in Key West next time and less days in Isla Mirada if I have my way around it. What's the difference, in your opinion, of the two islands? I just think there's more. Okay, so. I don't like I I like the fact that there's there are things to do in Key West uh, where you can actually walk to them and you don't have to get in your car and drive up and down the one laden road that takes you to all the keys. And, you know, the other islands are cool. There's a lot to there's a lot to love and appreciate about them and everything. The other keys. But um, 
you know, after a while, like after two square miles or two straight miles, you're, it's like you're seeing the same type of restaurant, the same True. type of, yeah. you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. just- It's a difference between a city and a suburb. Key West had more like, yeah, it Key was West a little a more city. populated. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. It was, it was felt it was more a like town. a city. Yeah. It's and a and Isla Mirada felt like the suburbs. Exactly. All we had time to do when we got off the boat was we went to one Argentinian restaurant, Viva. On Duval Street, which is like their yeah. famous, like fun street in Key yeah. West. Yeah. And you guys were shopping and doing all all that stuff after dinner, but it was like, before you knew it, the stores were closing, it was over. And that was our only night there. First of all, I would say three days in Key West is just too short. Like it, it, it's a long drive. He mentioned something that is true. There is one road in and one road out, meaning that there is one lane that goes north, one lane that goes south. So if you get behind a semi, or if you get behind a dump truck, or if you get just behind a grandma, yep. You're screwed. Yeah, like just you, strap in because you that's you have nowhere to go. Yeah, and it will take you roughly three hours from the top of the keys to the bottom of the keys, and that trip could turn into five hours very, very easily if there's an accident. So um, that to me was extremely annoying. Like annoying. It was like, how are you? How are you in 2023 and you have one one lane going in and one lane going out? <laughs> I think they like it that way. I mean, obviously. no, they do. They obviously. clearly do. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know if there's a lot of room for growth anyway, because you're, there's some stretch of road where the ocean is on both sides. Like you have the Gulf on one side and uh, the Atlantic on the other side. So I don't know if they could actually even widen the road, but it was crazy. I was, I, I, I just, I was like, wow, like one cool. little accident will screw up everything. I think the thing for me that I left with is like, you read about the keys and you hear like, oh, are you staying in Marathon? Are you staying in Isla Mirada or uh, Key Largo? Key, Key Largo. West. Like, and you're like, oh man, which one should we pick? And there's like this little bit of like it is. decision anxiety. Bottom line is, like everything stops in Key West. It's the southernmost point. And that is the, like, that's where the cruise ships will let people off. Like that's where the town town is. So when you want the town town, go to Key West. If you don't want that, then pick any of the other islands. It's really, true. It's like, there's not that big a difference between, um, and I know Marathon. there's a local out there listening who's about to scream at me, but uh, for me, driving up and down the one road that goes in and out of all of them, the keys do all start to look alike a little bit. So just settle where you think you have the nicest accommodations for your budget. You got the beach right there. Mm-hmm. Ask them about the beach because our beach was not amazing in no. front of our resort. And, and so we yes. stayed at Chesapeake and the place was great. Chesapeake Bay. And so the the upside they call it, it was called Chesapeake Bay Resort. It wasn't a resort. Now, this is honestly no slam on this place because we loved our cottage. They yeah. had little cottages with, good stay. with kitchens and a cute dining area. I mean, uh, a cute lo- like little living room. So I, I would go back. Yeah. But there were ve- it was very bare bones, meaning that um, there weren't umbrellas. It's like a resort. When I hear the word resort, I think like, you know, like beautiful loungers, umbrellas, people coming with like drinks to like bring us uh, while we're sitting by the beach, a beautiful sandy beach. This wasn't the case. This had an okay beach. No umbrellas, lounge chairs, but no cushions, no bar, no restaurant. So it was really just a hotel. It was basically a glorified hotel. That's all it was. That had suites. And we were in one of the suites. Yeah, it was a cottage. It wasn't a suite. It was actually a cottage. It was a it was a standalone building. Yeah, so there was like a suite is in a hotel. Um so it was a standalone cottage. And um they had, I think, ten of them. Something like that. Yeah. And so if that to me, like I would go back for that, but there weren't a lot of amenities. So you have Mm -hmm. to just be really like, you know, when you book it, like ask what, what are you getting? Because I think their definition in the keys of, of luxury is a little bit different than maybe everyone else's because it's really such a just beach town feel. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever stayed in Florida on any either coast, it's like it it does have a very Floridian feel to yes, it. Yes. That's a perfect um, word. It, like it, there were places we saw where it just felt like run down Daytona Beach and there were yep. places we saw that felt like St. Pete's, yes, you know? Yes. And so, um, you know, pick and choose your bat. Like Marathon is a little more built up. They seem to have way more condos or, you yeah. know, um, rental resorts of some sort, apartments maybe. I have no idea where, how or Because we didn't people, stay there, but yeah. we were driving through. It was definitely more plentiful of condos, it yeah. looked like. And like, yes. But I would say one of the most important questions you can ask if you have kids oh. is, what is your beach like? Because 
sure, you said our beach was good. It was as far as the sand hitting the water, but then there was just that one strip of sandbar that took you out to another like You're sort right. of clearing in, and you could see the seaweed all around you. Like you were literally, it was like walking through a garden path. Sort of investigate that, because if you have a little kid or a bunch of teenagers even who just want to run out there and jump in the water. <laughs> yeah. They're not doing it that at this they beach. Not. They're yeah. wading out. And then, and fortunately, like we said, the water's shallow everywhere. So even though we were fit, what, 50 yards out from the beach, when we finally hit the clearing of sand, yeah, it was still shallow. Like we still had to kneel down it's to be true. fully in the water. So it's true. yeah, you know. it came up like shallow. It means like it comes up to your waist. Yeah. Like yeah, I'm five, most. I'm five, nine. So yeah. that's, it's, you know, so, you know, if you're five, four, well then, Hey, it's going to be up to your neck. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but one of my favorite things we did while we were away was the couple's massage. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, yeah we, oh my God. You, uh, so I Denise know. booked us a couple's massage. It was really great. And you know, nice to be pampered. Uh, I hadn't had a massage since we were in Mexico, which was like a month ago. I sound like a little pig when I say that, but, uh, <laughs> well, I like to like throw in something that like, you sit in a chair all day. You work hard. Um, I'm always like, you know, looking at my yeah, phone, stressed. trying to we post, do stuff and, you know, working on the show. This and empty so, nesting thing has not been like this, the breeze that we thought it was going to be. No. So sometimes we have to do some nice things for ourselves. And, you know, um, I would, I would never book him a massage on the road because he won't do it. Like if I said, Hey, we're going into this town. So let's book a massage. He'd be like, yeah, no, I, I, have, I have stuff to do. No, I'm yeah. not doing that. No, I definitely, there has to be a beach or an ocean nearby. It is, it's if, like, if I do a, a massage. It's kind of true. It's, it's weird. It's, I don't it, like doing it. Like you can't take me to a massage in the city no if i'm like hey let's like, go what's to the point your vibrations are just going to get screwed up again the minute you walk out the door i guess is my feeling yeah you know it's true yeah. it's so yeah so i can easily i can easily book one for him without much uh without much argument when we are away and there's water and sand but that said my lady was great she gave me a uh deep tissue massage i needed it i like it i don't know what it is i like being abused a little bit when i'm being rubbed on <laughs> not so. me I'm a little, a little, I guess I'm just a little S and M like that, but man, I felt good. And like, she, uh, she actually, it was like, actually like some sort of sports therapy massage that she did. And she like cracked a hip and all this stuff. I walked out of there feeling like a million dollars, but you call you, it a couple's massage. We weren't in the same room because a couple's right. massage technically is you're yeah. in the same room. Okay. We showed up together and that was it. And then yeah. we went into our separate rooms, uh -huh. except uh -huh. the walls of the rooms didn't go all the way to the roof. They did not. To the and ceiling. I don't know what it is. She gets it from her mother. It's like, if there's a moment to cough mm -hmm. where you shouldn't absolutely mm -hmm. cough, mm -hmm. Denise will start coughing. So it's all quiet in this place. I get my face nestled down in the thing and my lady starts like doing the massage and everything. And I'm just so <laughs> relaxed. And all of a sudden I hear, Oh my gosh, and you have like no idea wheezing, what's going through my head. You're like wheezing, trying to hold back the cuff. And, like, and finally she's like, <laughs> she, goes, she goes, excuse me, I just need to do this. And I'm like, I could totally hear it all. But and you like, and everyone else, I, you and everyone else. I wanted else. to yell out like, can you, can, can you move that lady to a different room? <laughs> Wait, so, okay, what she did is, you know how they like take the oil in their hands and they rub it together and they put it underneath your face as your face down and they like want you to yeah, smell- it's like eucalyptus yes. or some lavender okay. or some shit. It was eucalyptus and whatever that was, the <laughs> brand, it went right up my nose and in my chest. So all of a sudden That's I had to cough. That's kind of the point. No, but it wasn't in a good way. It wasn't like it didn't open up everything. It caused me to cough. And all I kept thinking was, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to interrupt- everyone's massage because it wasn't just did. him it was there was other people yeah, there, there too people there. and the room the the like he said the walls didn't go up to the ceiling so there's a huge space you you can't even hear when they're walking around the other beds so it isn't like the most private um and i kept coughing and i was thinking oh my god he's going to yell yeah, out stop it <laughs> Oh he's going God. to yell out stop it and then and then you totally know totally crushing my vibe here when you get worked up over something like you can't stop thinking about it like then you really start yeah, yeah there's oh, a thing oh yeah and so then i had yeah. to like start doing yoga oh, breaths. i could see you like in my head i could yeah. see you. your eyes were watering uh -huh. and you're like <laughs> <laughs> and all i kept thinking <laughs> i was like Oh my God. I'm like next to somebody's old grandfather who's been smoking for 30 years. Uh huh. 
And all I kept thinking was everyone in there was like, who is ruining my massage yeah, right now? Like, somebody give that lady some water so we could all get our money's worth. Yeah. 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 It was still better than that one. Speaking of Mike and Carly, there was one we did with them oh. in Mexico some years ago. Remember that yeah. little like, 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 oh, rinky dinky, wall? yeah. Hole in the wall. It was yeah. legit. Like I thought I was going to lose a kidney in there. Remember, yeah, you had uh, to lay on your wallet. We did do a couple's massage uh-huh. in that one. That was just. That and they was were in the couple. They were in the next room next to us, uh-huh. and we were laughing the whole time. Uh-huh. And the Mexican girls were bringing us Coronas uh-huh. while we were getting. It was a horrible all. massage. What no. was it like? Twelve bucks or yeah. something uh-huh. like that. Oh my god! Yeah, but I was like so petrified that they were going to slip us a roofie or something like that. <laughs> you were, and you were really. I scared. was like, no way! I'm sleeping on my wallet. And they're like, you can leave your stuff in here, and I'm like, no, I'm not leaving my wallet. Yeah, he in literally there. laid on like, his wallet. I literally put my wallet in my underpants and I laid on top of it while uh-huh. she was rubbing. It. Fortunately, that was a good time. But I did think, in a, for a moment, I was like, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna knock us out and they're gonna take our kidneys. Yeah, you did think that. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, so but um, I've come a long way. Not that much. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, <laughs> um, one thing I did want to talk about really quick was that um, the day that we rented the boat, uh, I had read that there was a little island near our uh, near Isla Morada, which was like every every article I read said that this island called Indian Key Island. Yeah. It was a state park, but that um, you could kayak to it, and it would only take thirty minutes uh, from shore. So I thought, well, if we're gonna be in a boat and it's that quick to kayak from shore, it'll take like. 10 minutes in a boat, right? So um, I asked Carly and Mike if they would mind, and we ended up going to the Indian Key Island. But what they don't tell you, it's just, uh, what they don't tell you is that there's no real beach to like wash up on. So there's it's no not- real beachhead there. No. And so then you, so everybody was getting either out of a jet ski. It was some ski, real, like, it was some uh, real Robinson Crusoe, Crusoe shit. I'm yeah. not going to lie. And I was not like, prepared. I was looking around for Tom Hanks's volleyball on this place. Yeah. Seriously. And I, and when you land there in a boat, meaning like when you literally jump out of your boat to go into the water and walk to the island, because the water is pretty shallow. It's not sand. No. It's Cacti. It's literally under, cacti. underwater cacti. I mean, there's no other description for it. it I was, was yelling. And, he, and we did not have water shoes. No, we were wearing no, flip-flops. No. And I kept saying to him. We weren't planning on rock climbing that weekend or anything. No. So oh I kept God. saying to him, I had to look down and see if there was any like spot of white sand where I can place my feet. Otherwise, I would land my feet literally on top of cactuses in the water. It was the most excruciating thing ever. And I'm not really sure... It's worth it. So we went to the island. The Mm. island is called Indian Key Island. It's 11 miles, uh, you know, north, south, east, and west. The circumference is 11 miles. Um, It was actually used back in like the 1800s when 19 ships of the Spanish treasure fleet were wrecked on um, the Florida reef by a hurricane. And some of the survivors who survived this hurricane went to Indian Key until they were rescued. And then Indian Key became known for a hundred years, basically, as the shipwreck island. Um, The island started to grow. Like people actually were like, hey, my ship wrecked, but I could hang here. You know, it was very difficult in the 1700s on a ship to navigate around the Florida Keys. Lots of accidents happened because there were little islands that you did not see at night. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there was this. Uh, it, uh, in fact, it's it was so prevalent back then that it's still difficult today <laughs> because a month ago, a bunch of Cuban refugees oh. wrecked right off of oh I- my gosh. Isla Morada in that boat that we saw sitting there while we were sipping beers on the sandbar. Yes. Okay. And so yeah, oh, oh, and they sent is, them back to Cuba. Okay. This is crazy. We take our boat that we you know got for the day, the private boat, and there's a there's a very well known area near Isla Morada where. It's like the party area, the main party sandbar. So yeah. we're heading over there and in the middle of the ocean, but it's close to the shore. It's there sticking out of the water. It's a large ship. It's like something you see in like it's like it's like Pirates of the Caribbean ship. It's yeah. a big ship. It's it did look like a schooner. I was like, they escaped on this boat. Like, yeah, it was half what in. The hell, what the hell century are we in? So it's half in, half out. We see this ship as we're going to the party sandbar. And I think to myself, okay, this is like one of those ships that like literally crashed, yeah. like Hurricane Ian, yeah, or like or something, or, or like something. That. like or tropical storm, yeah, right. And like people use it now to like snorkel around or like to scuba dive because you know they yeah. like it starts to become like its own like reef and some some an artificial reef. Yeah, and, divers go right. to it or whatever. Yeah, sure. 
So I have a story in my head. What was your story before you learned what it really was? What was I the actually, story? I actually thought it was just due to inclement weather. Like I, my my money was on hurricane boat. Okay, my money was that it happened like seventy years ago, and you know people were now using it yeah. for scuba diving. But anyway, we meet a local at our party sandbar. This guy who has lived there for years, and I just happen to say, "Hey, what's the story with the boat?" And he goes, "Oh, he's like that." He goes, "That was uh, Cuban immigrants." And I said, "From when?" And he goes, well, last month. <laughs> yeah. You could have knocked us over with a feather. Last that thing looked like it had month? been sitting there for years. Yeah. I said, what happened? And he goes, they crashed. He's uh-huh. like, and they all got sent back to Cuba. Yep. I was like, what are they going to do with the boat? He's like, they're going to leave it. He's like, they might come clean it up. They might not. I was like, yeah. I mean, because, you know, you read about this in the paper, you hear about it on the news, uh, but we were a thousand feet from this boat. It was yeah. like, I don't know. It bothered me. It bothered me in so many ways. I mean, yeah, you know. of course. I mean, the fact that they were trying to escape and they had to go back and yeah. all that. But um, they, the and other thing, so one side note that we picked up off of that while we were on. You, they hit a sandbar. The sea cat. That's why they crashed. Yeah, they, they hit, hit the sandbar yeah. and crashed. But uh, it is actually a trend where it's like if your boat gets washed away in a, oh. in a, in, in a hurricane or for whatever the reason, if your boat gets shipwrecked, there's this thing that people do <laughs> where they strip the serial number off the boats so that if the boat crashes mm-hmm. or gets shipwrecked or whatever, yeah. uh, they're not on the hook. Like they just grab a little like kayak or lifeboat they or abandon. something. They abandon the boat and then it's basically left there in the bay for the government to clean up. But it doesn't always happen. And it no, doesn't- I mean, it's the government. So, of course, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> Have you seen the potholes? <laughs> like, um, yeah, but okay, on so- every road in America? Like, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, the government is not really taking no. care of cleaning up the boats, honey. No. And you yeah. know what? It doesn't just. It, what's interesting is that um, we we saw it less in like more affluent areas. So like, for instance, Naples, when we were in Naples, there was one boat that was sticking up out of the water and our boat guy at the time said, oh yeah, the, who knows if they're going to take right. that. It was a guy who didn't have insurance, whatever yeah. his hurricane Ian came and whatever. But what's interesting is the keys. Like I would think if you look around, the place is pretty expensive to live. Yeah, There was more than one boat there sticking out of the water. Yeah. I'm like, are they not going to clean this shit up? Like this is the keys. This is not like, you know. No. I don't know. I think it takes some time to dig them out, especially in that shallow water. Like, how are you going to get there? Like, you have to, get, like, you're going to shipwreck your own government boat trying to get the other boat out? Okay, but you saw some that were like on the side, on shore, and those were expensive looking boats and they had yeah, been so, there for a while. Yeah. It's like, they're just going to let it sit there. It's you know, kind of like, crazy. You know, like high school kids are just like oh, smoking dope. Yep. And drinking and yep. like getting on there in their like little uh, motorboats or whatever and going out there and seeing what they could find on these things. Oh, for sure. No totally. question about it. Yeah. yeah. Going back to my story about Indian Key and how, um, you know, so many boats would wreck near the Keys. Mm. And um, I yeah. can't believe it's a state park. It's like been abandoned. They do call it a ghost town now. Like if you read anything about Indian Key, everything like describes it as a ghost town island. Yeah. It's like. Why would you make it a state park, but then not take there's, care of there's it? There's no park ranger there. So I guarantee not. if people want to go there and hang and camp at night or whatever, they could totally get away oh, with it. 100%. So. They just can't light up. So there you go. There's your travel tip. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy a brutal night on Indian Key. Uh-huh. For sure. There's no shelter. <laughs> yeah. There's no shelter See, at oh, all. We did walk to the one. We walked to the far shore there's away no from shelter. our boat. And you go, this is like survivor type stuff. It was. Yeah. There's bamboo broken, laying down on the ground. I was like, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh my God. I couldn't yeah. imagine being naked and afraid there. No, so, not comfortable. Not at all. Anyway. So that was something um, fun that, okay, I take that back. That was not fun. The next day he had to pick out stuff on the bottom of my feet. Yeah, you yeah. did. You, you cut up your feet on the cacti. Yeah. So. And then you walked in dirt on the island. Yeah, it was awesome. What's up, guys? Just wanted to take a break real quick to jump into one of our listener submissions. We appreciate all the interactions you guys give us on social media. But this week, we are highlighting a very special person who has been with us since day one. Her name is Alicia Castellanos Clark. Alicia, thank you so much for suggesting Durango to James and I. Neither one of us have ever been. I actually had to look it up when you mentioned it. I know that you have a home there and you suggested that we should come visit. And Yeah, I've never I- been. 
Yeah, and so uh, so we're both going to actually come to Durango, Colorado, and, uh, and and see what it's all about. But you also follow our adventures, and you always suggest cool places for us to visit or restaurants for us to uh, to try when we're on the road. And uh, we just appreciate it. And I, I love your interaction. And thank you yeah. so much for listening. Now back to the show. So. I'm kind of notorious for this game that I like to play. It's not really a game. It's a conversation starter. And I like to do it when we're on the road. And I used to do it with the kids because it was just really nice to keep the conversation going. Otherwise, they'll be on their phones oh, shit. the whole time. I know what this is. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know where this is going. Uh-huh. So um, I have this uh, this card something. I don't, I'm going to say it's a game, but it's called table topics. And it comes in like a a plastic container and it is all topics to talk about. Um, when you are with friends, it's truly a conversation starter. I, I started it when the kids were in middle school, we do it like on a pizza night we just pull a card and ask a question. Like, like back then it was like, kid, like I got the topics that were kid related. So it was like, what's your favorite Disney princess? Remember? And then um, as they got older, I would get different topics. Like some of the topics were pop culture. Mine is Ariel, by the way. (laughs) Mine's, mine's Belle. Anyway, I hijacked your story. You did. It's okay. Um, but in any case, so I like to bring table topics on the road. I always do it with us. The kids moan and groan, but they generally will partake in it. And it's always a fun conversation starter. And then you realize you're an hour and a half, you know, later on down the road and everyone has to go pee. So on the way back, we drove straight from Key West to Miami. Yeah. And that was a long drive. And um, I decided to bring it on our trip because I knew Carly and Mike would be in the car with us. And there's only so much you can talk about on um, on any given you know, five yeah, I mean, hour, we, road, four hour road trip. It's not like trip. we didn't just see them in November. So right, it's like, right. we're pretty There's caught some, up. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do table topics right now. What? Yeah. Shit, are you kidding me? No. <laughs> oh, come on. I already did this. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. So you're going to pull oh, are a Are these card. cards staged as no, well? Not, no, these are not staged cards. So I have, I, a, to ask the I have a baggie of mixed we have, up cards. We have a very uh, high quality Skip Town uh-huh. accessory bag. Uh-huh. For those of you who are just so listening, this is just an it's exi- basically a 10-gallon Ziploc bag. So, the, no, just pick one. Just pick one. So, don't even look at it. You just have to pick one. Okay. What so do I do? pick one. You know how to do this. Don't act yeah, like all I, of a sudden wanna, you don't know I don't want to be reaching the bag. No, it's very just loud. Just pick one. So, here's what, what it is. It's just a topic. He's going to pick a bat. He's going to pick it out of the bag, and he's going to ask me a question, and then it gets the conversation going. What age seems old to you? 90. 90? Yeah. Okay. What age You're not going to expand on that at all? No. I mean, if I was 20, I'd say 40, but I'm 54. So I'm not okay. going to say 60 because that's just like six years away. Well, it was a dumb question because it's like, it's not great content if you're just going to say 90 and be done. Yeah. This is an example of sometimes the card is just a one word answer and okay. other times it's more of an explanation. So uh, what age seems old to you? 65. Why? I don't know. I think a lot of people like <laughs> fall off a cliff at 65. Literally? Like physically fall off a cliff? No, not literally fall off a cliff. People don't walk to a cliff and fall off a cliff. <laughs> I don't okay. understand where you're going with that. But so no, I literally meant like I thought you meant like people fall off a cliff. I'm like, why? Why at 65 do they fall off a cliff? Do they not <laughs> see where they're going? Watching too much midsummer. <laughs> okay. No, I'm saying they like they they just check out and it's like all of a sudden they do the same like three things every single day. They go to at the market. 65. They, I don't know. I'm guessing. Okay. Like I don't know. So that seems old to you. Um, I mean, I 65 think people, is old. Okay. Yeah, they stopped going out in the winter. They stopped doing all these things, you know? Okay. All right. My turn. I'm going to pick a card. Okay. All right. Do you believe in ghosts? I do. Yeah. I think, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I believe in metaverses. So I think our version of what we think are ghosts, um, are basically just people who have the ability to cross back and forth into different universes, metaverses. Yeah. What about okay. you? I do. I'm definitely a believer in ghosts. I always have been. Um, yeah, 100%. I believe in ghosts. I don't believe in aliens, but I believe in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, uh, so that gives you a, a little glimpse into uh, a game or a conversation starter that I love to bring with us wherever we go. And I've been doing this for at least 10 years. It's called table topics. Um, so if you want to torture your family or friends or loved ones with uh-huh. uh, shallow and somewhat sometimes deep topics, Get yourself a handy bag like this from the baggie. Skip Town All Stars website. <laughs> and inside there, we're also going to send you a. I'm just kidding. We should wrap this up. Okay. What do you say? Let's do top five, bottom five, really quick. 
Okay, go ahead. Okay, so do you have a top five? I'm not totally five? fleshed out on mine. No, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna lean heavily on your answers. Okay, so top five, bottom five for um, the keys for Denise Gordon. Top five. Um, my ocean boat rental was incredible. Highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, the private, they both were nice, uh, but I would say if you only had one choice and you can have someone ride drive the boat for you, do a private do a private boat ride. You know, we've talked about private tours, uh, you know, private. Um, um, tour guides, uh, private drivers. We like the private thing. Yeah. So uh, for us, that was not my number one. My number two top thing about the Florida Keys was the sandbar and the beautiful water. I've only seen it in photos. I've seen it on TV. I have been to the Caribbean, but I haven't been in the middle of the ocean like I was uh, this time around. And the water is just stunning, beautiful. I loved it. I, it's I crazy to be surrounded by nothing but water and to be standing on a sandbar. It's pretty nuts. It is. It it's was incredible. Cool. It was a great experience. Uh, number three, um, there are no corp no corporate hotels. I love that. I love that they try to keep it simple as like, you know, surly and sassy as that woman was. Um, look, she was proud of the fact that like they've kept corporate America out of the keys. They'll take your money, but they don't want any corporations there. Or at least on Isla Mirada, yeah. Isla Mirada, for sure. Uh, number four, I love that we stayed in those cottages. So I would recommend yeah. Chesapeake Bay uh, Resort, but it's not a resort. Don't get confused. <laughs> it's just a hotel and ask for the cottages. Ask um, for the cottages. Yeah. Uh, number five was being with our friends, Carly and Mike. Yeah. I really thought that they rounded out the trip really nicely. Um, they were fun to hang with. Uh, they were up for anything. And those are the kind of people you want to travel with. Yeah. So I was just super grateful. They flew all the way from Los Angeles to spend a nice long weekend with us. It yeah. was just really special. Respect. So, Thank you guys. Yeah. So uh, my bottom five. Dude. Okay. Um, the people that work there are really dumb. So I'm, <laughs> that's number one. Anywhere we went, <laughs> the hell? anywhere, anyone we talked to, no one knew anything. I don't know what that is. I don't know why. I have no idea. But in the hotel, no one knew anything. In the boat rental, no one knew anything. Nice as could be, just dumb. No one knew their surroundings. No one knew anything about Isla Mirada. Like it was crazy. You would ask questions like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, do you not live here? Do you not work here? Number two, our food experience. To me, that was a huge turnoff to make it a um, monthly or even like, um, um, what's the word when you do something all the time? Frequent. Yeah. Frequent visit. Like we can't make it a frequent visit because the food is so expensive. Hotels come down in price, but food does not. Number three was um, a one lane highway. Like to me, I'm like, how do you do this? So uh, it could cause a lot of problems in your vacation. So if you're on a really short uh, weekend and you just want to get in and out, do not go to the Keys. Plan accordingly. It's going to be really hard to do in two days. Yeah. Um, my friend who lives in Delray Beach kept saying to me, who you're cutting it close because it's a one lane highway. Are you sure you want to just go for three or four days? She's like, you could get stuck on the highway for many hours. I didn't get it until I got there and then I got it. And we did not get stuck, but boy, it could easily happen. Uh, number four, as much as I like Chesapeake Bay, it wasn't a resort. Check with your concierge when you're booking a room in the Keys, anywhere in the Keys. Make sure it has all the amenities you want because what you may want, they may not have and you will just assume they do and you're going to be on that one lane highway, driving two miles down the road Without an every umbrella. time you want a cup of coffee or something. Yep, so exactly. We had no restaurant, no bar, anything in ours. Yep. So there are plenty within walking distance, but Yeah, and no umbrella. Like I can't say that enough. There was no umbrella. How do you have a how do you have a beachfront with no umbrella? Like I I'm sorry, I'm white. I just am we very get it. pale. Yeah, we yeah. get it. We understand when we see you. Yeah. Okay. My fifth of my bottom five. This is the last one. When you're uh booking a trip to the keys. Make sure you are fully aware there's not a lot to do on some of these islands at night. Isla Mirada, for instance, there's nothing to do at night. And there's really nothing to do during the day if you are not on the ocean. It's just that simple. Key West, a little different. It's a, like James said, a downtown. So yes, there's more of a nightlife. They're open till four in the morning, the bars. So if you're looking for an island that would provide a little bit more activity than just plain water sports, Key West might be the island for you, yeah. but I would say definitely research what you're interested in because Isla Mirada literally had nothing but water activities and nighttime was very quiet. So you got to make sure that you're an outdoor person before you book this trip to the Keys. Okay. 
Uh, my top five, I echo a lot of yours, so I'm not going to repeat them. But uh, the one thing, the thing, the top fives that I wanted to mention were the lighthouse. Oh, uh, yeah. When we took the boat out uh, off the shore of Isla Mirada, you can see it from the shore. You can't miss it. Uh, it's really great. There are other uh, lighthouses up and down the coast, as we found. I don't know what the rest of them are like on other keys. I just know the one on Isla Mirada was really great. And if you can swim and you want to jump off the boat in 20 to 30 foot water, that's crystal blue, throw on your goggles or whatever. You can see everything below you. It's pretty pristine. It's great. It's, yeah. it's fantastic. Um, Agreed. I like seafood, so that's my number two. Uh, I love the fact that there's fish in every single restaurant. You can still get steak there if you're not seafood inclined. So if you have somebody in your group or you know uh, in your partnership that uh, isn't so into the scallops and the grouper yeah. and the yellowtail and all that stuff, uh, you can definitely get steaks and burgers and chicken and all that stuff. So I love the tropical feel. It really is the gateway to the Caribbean and you can feel it when you're there. It feels unlike any other part of Florida that I've ever been. I was going to say the people there are really nice. I didn't have to deal with liquor lady like oh, you I did. didn't think the people there were nice. You didn't think like, so? Even the girl at Publix when I got the sandwich, she was so unhappy. That was going to be one of my like bottom uh, fives. I didn't think people there were that okay, nice. Okay, well, so but I'm going to get to You had a different that. experience. No, let me jump into the bad then. Uh, I think one of the reasons that you run into people who are moody or dour or whatever the word is, uh, it's because a lot of the workers on these islands cannot afford to live there and they have to drive an hour and a half each way to work up and down that road to get to Homestead, Florida. I know, that doesn't is, make you dumb though. That doesn't make you- If you don't live in that area, you're you not going to know directions to every place. If that's your job. If you're working at a boat company and you're renting you boats, you should know where- You should boat. know where- But with 800 islands and somebody says, where's Indian Key? Okay, Indian Key, they should have known. They should have definitely known. But with 800 islands there, James, I mean, come on, we're talking put- about like 20 year old burners who are like renting out these boats. Like, what could you possibly expect with okay. with that much if geography? They're stoned, fine, that's different. With that much geography and them actually residing an hour and a half away, and this is literally just their job. They know how to run boats. They they wash the boats. They put gas in the boats. They can tell you how to drive the boats, where to pull them up, and all that other stuff. And they know where the lighthouse. Everybody. You know, everybody just goes there to party. Like so many people just go to their party. You are probably the only lady who wanted to explore Indian Key. Okay, okay? fine. Okay, and once we were fine. on the island, I could see why. Okay. But uh, everybody else just wants to go to the lighthouse. They want to go to the sandbar. They want to cruise around and they want to, how do I prevent from getting washed out to Cuba? Right. Okay. And those are the three questions that they get all day, every day. Um, so maybe it's not dumb, it's just indifferent. Yeah. I just I think there's got to be a smart entrepreneur there who can build somewhat affordable housing for uh, people who work on these keys to live there so they don't have to drive as far. It's got to be true. so dangerous. And you know, one of them stops off after work to have a beer with one of their friends yeah, or whatever. True. And it's like, now they got to drive an hour and a half with like, you know, yeah, an agree. IPA in their bloodstream and it's not good for anyone. Yeah, agreed. You know? It's terrible. So that's really my only like, just like I had a great time. Oh, it's expensive as hell. That's my other one. <laughs> it's expensive as hell. Like seriously. Oh my God, I got to book some work anyway to make, to make up for Key West. But uh, th- that's it. Those are my only two drawbacks. My suggestion is plan it on off season. I would go back and we will go back. We're just going to pick a different time of the year yeah. and we're probably going to do it a little bit more economically um, when it comes to food. Like we'll just have to research that a tiny bit more and see yeah. if there are more reasonable choices. All right. Yeah. So a um, couple of things that I want to mention is please, uh, if you haven't yet, check our link tree. We have it on um, our social media and we also have it on our YouTube channel. We also yep. have it on our website and the link tree always has Google Sheets and the Google Sheets will show you exactly where we went on our trip. We've mentioned it a couple of times, but I think I need to like just remind people weekly that um, if you really are interested in where we stayed, uh, check it out on Linktree because I'll have a Google sheet and it will it will outline for you exactly where we went. It's a map and it puts dots on every single location we yeah. ate and also where we sightseed and also where we stayed. Sightseed? Is that a verb? I think it is. Sight saw? Seed. S-E-E-D, right? Sightseed? I think- What would it be? Sight, did I just make that- Went sightseeing. Did I just make that up? You, I think so. Sightseed. I don't think, I'm not, I'm I pretty just, sure that's not- there's All no, right. Let me take that back. So how do I say that? Sightseed. That, oh. I sightseed it. 
Okay, forget that. So just check out the Google Sheet with um, with all the locations. And subscribe. Get your friends to subscribe. Share our podcast. Yes. We are out on the loose as empty nesters. Take a minute and write a review for us on Apple Podcasts or leave just um, a rating on Spotify. It goes a long way. It a really long does. Way. You have no idea what one review or rating can do. And it sounds like uh, the next weekend getaway is on me, huh? So I guess you should prepare for some index cards. Oh, I don't oh. want to tip my hat too far. I'm not going to do the same thing on every index card. I think I've already figured out my method is going to be something you'll hate and something you'll really hate, especially when I take Denise drag racing for my weekend getaway. It'll just be like our normal trip in the car. <laughs> Take them out. Empty nest, full tank. See you guys next week. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.